and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to thee, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. I thank the Lord for the opportunity that is uh, given to me and uh, I also would like to thank our pastor, secretary, treasurer, LCC for giving me this chance to share my thoughts on this verse as you find in the book of Romans <clears throat> chapter 12 <clears throat> verse 6. It's found on page 1205 in the Pew Bibles. I'll read the entire uh, verse and then I'll go to the topic. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophesy in proportion to our faith. Then it continues. I'll be touching on 7 and 8 also. But then the topic given is, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. Max Lucado, an American evangelist and a writer, I've heard him speak also over the television, I've read his books too. He, re he states about the book of Romans, the book of Romans is a life-changing letter that Paul has written to the Romans. It is indeed true. Those of us who have read it in BSF and even otherwise, we have read Romans, the book of Romans. And uh, before that, uh, the subtitle or the title that's given as a living sacrifice. Paul says that our bodies are, you're all familiar with this verse, our bodies are living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. So, though the body has different organs, each one is made so special in a different way. Each one has a different function. But then, everything is being coordinated to function. Only then, the entire body and mind connect up together and it is the actions, the thoughts, everything synchronizes together and then we are able to proceed with whatever we need to um, think, act. Now all of us know the meaning of gift. It can be said in simplified terms a gift is something that you give to a loved one or someone out of love. That's one type. Another is gift or talent. She's so gifted. She sings so beautifully. She's gifted in art, painting, sports. You can go on and on. So, God has given us all gifts. Only thing... Some of us many, many times say, oh, I'm not that competent enough. I'm not that bold enough. I don't think I can. First of all, we should remove that. We should shun all these and should take up. My God is with me. I can, I can, I can. Especially for youngsters. That attitude would build you up. So all of us have talents. I just want to read uh, what Anne Frank, a German Jewish uh, lady writes, everyone has inside of her or him a piece of good news. The good news is that you really don't know how great you are. And how much you can love what you can accomplish and what your potential is. So, each one has potential. It varies from person to person. Only thing, with the help of God, not to think like uh, she says, uh, great you are. It doesn't mean that we think that we are so great. No. 
but god has given each one of us some talent or other and some of course talented in many things that again we do see but we are called to use the talent you might think of the uh, parable of the 10 minas one uh, servant what he did with that one mina that was given to him he wrapped it up in a handkerchief he never multiplied it at all so i just want to emphasize that god given talents let us not underestimate us whatever god has given to us let us use it for the glory of god now god in his grace has bestowed on us gifts that are should be used for god's glory that's what i mentioned and not to hide and according to paul we are saved by god's grace the other day reverend premaya said uh, about mercy and grace now grace is undeserved unearned and unmerited favor we don't deserve it at all it's just by the faith in jesus christ and in his works it is given to us so sheer grace utter grace right now at this moment we are all here in this church by the sheer grace of god so we need to praise all the time keep on wherever we are keep on praising keep on thanking him never mind whatever that we do now here we are talking about worldly or earthly gifts i was mentioning like about singing or uh, like uh, interested in craft or uh, diving or skiing so many things are there you might excel in all that but then here particularly paul is talking to us as to how best you can use the gifts that are given to you by grace the spiritual gifts mentioned in the seventh first one prophesy i read that seventh one uh, verse seven if service in our serving the one who teaches in his teaching the one who exhorts in his exhortation the one who contributes in generosity the one who leads with zeal the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness so so many we do have i'll quickly run through um first of all let us take up a prophecy this is a major gift and all of us are familiar with that uh, major and minor prophets whatever god wanted them to convey prophesying is foretelling foreknowing and like they did it accurately you you all can remember what prophet isaiah prophesied about christ's birth about christ's death likewise so many christ himself predicted his end we know we are reading in the gospels and uh, you are familiar with all the major prophets i'll only mention a few prophet elijah elisha isaiah jeremiah ezekiel even prophet uh, samuel you could say christ himself he had so many names prophet also was one he was asking his disciples who do they say i am then one said prophet another one said messiah peter only said you are the christ the son of god so for telling what's going to happen in an accurate way how does it happen they don't tell it just like that on their own no god reveals it to them they are so filled with the holy spirit and god reveals and that's how even now we do hear of evangelists um prophesying about the new year so many like what's going to happen uh, in 2025 uh, something like that it does happen 
but these men of god or women of god children of god wait on the lord and god reveals like we i uh, think of daniel how he knew to inter- interpret the dreams so very well accurately so all these are gifts given by god so <clears throat> we'll take up a ministry of serving the lord this is another spiritual gift and this is to spread the love of god that's what we are asked to do christ did it he spread god's love every time he mentioned about god i'm doing it because of my father me and my father are one so he was insisting about god the father and other than that he also did it very diligently and perfectly whatever ministry the short time that he had to do in the entire earth he was walking and uh, preaching the good news and thus prepared the uh, apostles and uh, the disciples also and next we think of saint paul how his travel and all that and the suffering that he underwent because of christ he loved christ so much that he wanted to take up his word and spread it to whichever part and he was suffering so much you all know lashed and then um, shipwrecked so many sufferings of that kind and uh, god wants us to minister in a small or big way whatever that is possible within us there are some who go out of the way leaving the comfort zone and reaching out to the poor needy there are millions who do not know the name of our lord jesus christ it is pathetic really pathetic so it's high time that we find ways and means to reach out in whatever way that is good for us convenient for us and when we wait on the lord the lord would guide us he would speak to us and he would open doors for us open new avenues for us to go and spread the word so prophet samuel did ministry in his own way Aaron for that matter he did he served and likewise we have so many examples and god spoke to them as to how it should be all step by step god is leading them is leading them also now next is teaching our lord jesus christ himself is a teacher he taught so many things and above all everything that we need to be god's children and also moral values and how to be godly and other than that you can take the examples of moses paul peter and many others and nowadays of course the missionaries in the past as well as in the present they have also taught from the word toiled very hard so many of the missionaries you know in earlier times when so much of uh, science and technology hadn't improved so many missionaries contracted leprosy you all know so they suffered that much of love they had for our lord that brought them now travel was not that easy now it's rather easier but then those days it was not at all easy so we can imagine how much of sacrifice they risked their lives also and we were taught the moral values and how to be christ like not namesake christians but walk the talk next is encouraging our lord encouraged moses when he said i am not eloquent lord how would i speak to the pharaoh 
in so many occasions initially to become a leader he hesitated so much but then god encouraged him and joshua if you see joshua chapter 1 he says i am with you just like i was with moses i will be with you so he encouraged now and then he patted him and made him another leader to follow moses so encouragement that is very much needed we need to encourage one another to build up one another not to tear anybody down christ we know we read in the gospels a woman was brought to him caught red handed committing a deadly sin and christ how beautifully he dealt with her without wounding her without embarrassing her everyone left and he just raised his head and looked none was there except this woman and he said nobody condemned neither do i condemn so so sweetly he dealt with that we might think such a sinner when you think of it you feel somewhat you know like but christ had a different attitude towards her and she definitely that moment very moment she followed and i'm sure she would have spoken to many and made them also follow christ and then think of paul how he encouraged timothy just like his own son he encouraged him every step of his journey and he kindled the faith that timothy had so many you read in the bible like even prophet elijah for that matter god encourages him he became of course he toiled so hard and he faced so much of trial and he was almost <clears throat> wanting to die god speaks to him refreshes him so like that we find so many children of god whenever we become little low even all of us do feel i have felt it that time that moment when you feel little down or low he encourages you by bringing one thought or bringing a, a beautiful uh, uh, cloud in the sky something or you might see a bird or a butterfly your mood will definitely change god is like that all of us have experienced about our loving god he never wants us to be sad sorrowful um next let's take up exhortation that's urging or advice god advised again moses comes in almost you know because he's so familiar and he was a great leader also so same thing with regard to joshua also advising and christ's words and god's words were all like advising us love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength and with all your might love your neighbor as yourself so likewise and be kind to one another be paul says be imitators of christ pray without ceasing so many you can list the list goes on and on and in the old testament we know how uh, moses his father in law jethro jethro uh, urging him or rather advising him to include more and more of elderly uh, elders rather to be assist to be assistants for him otherwise the entire burden of leading all the lakhs and odd was right on his head and it, it was too much for him so he suggests like that he urges and of course paul to timothy naomi urging ruth to lead her for a better life and boaz definitely 
Next is generosity. And God is so generous to us. He gives us more than we ask or imagine. He meets all our needs. And he loves the cheerful giver. When you get from him, we ought to give to the needs of the church and other ministries or whatever, however God leads us. Christ says, even in this chapter it comes, if you have two tunics, give one to the needy. So, love your enemies, feed your enemy if he is hungry, give water if one is thirsty. So like that, so many. And in the Old Testament, we all know how Joseph, he was ill-treated by the brothers. Rather tortured by the brothers, they wanted to kill him. But he did not remember all that when famine struck. He fed them. He fed them and the father too. And he provided everything for them. He never had any grudge. Oh, my brothers did this to me. Why should I bother? No. How he wept and all that, all of us know. So he was generous. Boaz was generous to Naomi and Ruth. And in Acts 2 we read, the early Christians, they gave, you know, they sold everything and shared everything with the other brethren. They broke bread together and also meals to, were taken together like that. They shared and we can go to Exodus 35 and 36 when Moses appeals for the building of the tabernacle. People, how they came with the gold earrings and uh, you know, all the ornaments and all that. At one stage, Moses says, enough. This is enough. That was how people were bubbling, itching to give. Next is leading. Christ, our Lord, is the number one example. He's the role model for leading. How beautifully he had Judas with him, nagging him. Peter, impulsive. Now with all that, he put up with all of them. Each one showing his character. But still, God was so, uh, Christ was so patient enough. He endured all this. For the purpose of spreading God's love. To fulfill for what God sent him to this earth. Moses was a great leader. Joshua was a great leader. And many leaders even in the world we have seen. And uh, evangelists, pastors who do ministry. Do lead us in a way that they are supposed to. Lead us. King David, if we go to the Old Testament again, King David, King Solomon, they were all good leaders. And pastors are shepherds in a church to lead the flock in the right direction. And lastly, mercy. And God Himself is so merciful, very much. We have all experienced His mercy. And we do experience day in and day out, we do experience His mercy. And David, you all might remember, he wanted to make Mephibosheth to, you know, the, the descendant of Saul. He asked, is there anybody? from the clan of Saul. Then he comes to know about him. He was lame. He was dropped by the nurse while coming down in the stairs. So David shows mercy to this person. And he says, you will eat with me as long as you live. 
with me. You will dine with me in the same dining table. So that was the broad mind that David had. And as I already mentioned, the missionaries, the evangelists in earlier times mainly sacrificed a lot. To mention a few, Amy Carmichael, even our Mother Teresa, Fanny Crosby, Ida Skada, and Sadhu Sundar Singh, Vedanayagam, Shastriya, so many, there are many, I just picked a few and uh, read it. So, God has given us talents or gifts and it is to be used for his glory as I uh, started, I mentioned that. So, with joy, cheerfully, may we serve in whatever capacity that we are able to. Singing. Let's not hide our talents. Many a time we, we do feel shy or, you know, laid back, withdrawn. No. God wants you to only then the others will come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Sing for him. Talk about him. Encourage one another. Comfort one another. Just a word of, if someone is sick, just pick up the phone and inquire and say a few lines right from the scripture and encourage. That would, you know, that particular time, that entire mood will change. That person will be feeling much better. So, I just want to close with the assurance that when we wait on him, our God will show us a way as to how we can use the talents given out of grace, spiritual gifts that are given to us in a proper channel. I leave two questions for us. Are we wasting our gifts? Second, how well can we use the talents that God has given us? Let's pray. A loving and gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for this particular statement about your gifts and how well we can use it. The spiritual gifts. Yes, Lord, you have given each one of us gifts, Lord. And may we use them in the right way. With your help, you will go before us. You will hold our hand and walk with us. Lord. And you will help us to accomplish whatever we plan to do to build your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.